In this video, let's talk about the athlete turned actor, Ren Jialun. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Today, I want to start a new series of videos that I'm not sure、uh, how many videos it's gonna run to, and currently having no clear plans at all. But it's gotta start somewhere, so I decided I'm gonna start it with talking about the actor Ren Jialun. I think most of the viewers who come to my channel are familiar with. Chinese Romulan, you have definitely heard about Ren Jialun. His first round of gaining of popularity happened back in 2016, when the drama Glory of Tang Dynasty aired. This year, 2020, seemed to be his second wave of popularity, quickly pushing him to the top level of. Popular actors right now in China, due to the quite high view counts and popularity under the power Jin Yi Zhixia has gotten, crossing 2019 and 2020. But to me, a more interesting aspect of this actor is he is one of those athlete turned actor in Chinese Romuland who managed to do really well. So this video is dedicated to that actor, looking at his entire journey that led him to this point. Ren Jialun is originally named. Ren Guochao, and it is a often used joke within his fandoms and also in Chinese drama land. People just love to tease him about his original name. Guochao, Guo means country, Chao means surpass or superior, depending on how you use this character. And there has been an explanation floating around that I cannot 100% confirm that the reason he was named like that by his parents was like they hope he can surpass. Any country's people, because Ren as a surname is just a surname, but the character itself in Chinese language can mean 任何 which means any. So surpass any country's people. The even more funny thing about Ren Jialun's name is he has many, many, many. His original name Guo Chao. His English name initially Tony, later turned into Alan. He was also for a time called Prince and Leader. <laughs> he even has got a Japanese name because there was a time that the group he was in wanted to go to Japan to pursue their career, and he named himself. Ren Yao Xi, which is a phonetic translation directly from the Japanese word Yao Xi. Yeah, good, good, very good. He has mentioned multiple times in interviews and stuff, asking people, please do not mention me by my other name than Ren Jialun, which is his current. Name because it will divert traffic. He has too many names. If you use any of his names, his real name doesn't get mentioned that many times. And when they do the data searching, whatever, it's not a real reflection of his popularity. <laughs> That is very true. But you can't stop people calling him Guo Chao because Guo Chao just sounded so much more intimate. Closer, more like a,、um, a person, an average person that you know, name instead of Jialun, who sounded like a much more polished, prettier name. Ren Jialun was born in 1989, April the 11th, in the province Shandong and city Qingdao, literally meaning Blue Island. Qingdao is a very lovely place. I've been there, and I really do like it. It has some older architecture that got passed down during、uh, a period in Chinese history when the city is basically kind of lent to Germany. So it has a lot of old architecture that comes from that period. It is also a port city, so it has a lot of great seafood. It is also famous for producing a local beer called Qingdao Pijiu. When he was around four or five years old, there happened to be a table tennis teaching place that's really close to where he lived, and his parents were like, "Yeah, we should send our kids to some sports training places just to get the boy's energy out and then get a bit training." When he got in there, his coach actually discovered he's a pretty talented kid at doing table tennis, so he started his. Long career of playing table tennis. In one of the interviews he did back in 2017-18, he said his childhood was pretty much no play. He had little in common with his same age group of people. If you want to chat with him about, oh, do you remember that really popular song, that really popular、uh, animation, that really popular TV? Back when we were at that age, he would be. I have no idea because he never watched them. His schedule was going to school and then coming out of school in the afternoon, go straight into table tennis training till midnight, 
and then go back home and do homework and sleep and then repeat every day even into weekends he never stops and he never plays that sounded like a pretty horrible childhood but it did get him really good at table tennis so eventually he got selected into the provincial team of Shandong province. It is probably to our great fortune and to his dismay, around 16 years old, he just got too many injuries to be selected for continuing a professional career at table tennis. He mentioned this in an interview. He got a lot of injuries here and there and he could never sit quietly enough to wait for them to completely heal to go back to playing it. So all his injuries are like 60-70% recovered by the time he went back to playing it. The combined result is he is physically too damaged to continually play professionally. When he had to quit his athletic career, he had to think about what else he should do. In China, if you are trained in that intensity, usually let's just say you cannot even have enough time to do academic studies well, so it's not realistic to try to get into really good high school, really good university, it's pretty much impossible. At the time, Korean pop was super popular in China, so he aimed at being a good dancer and singer. He's a fan of Ring, so he would look at how he dances and close the door and lock himself in the room and dance. He also practiced singing at the same time to went to a school and learn something and actually passed an exam to become an airport ground stuff and actually did really well at that job. But his dream of becoming a dancer and singer never stopped. So during the years afterwards, he attended many contests, singing, dancing, and got pretty good results. Back in 2010, he actually attended the China's Kuai Le Nansheng, one of those super successful talent selection shows China has produced. And there are performances that today when you look back is pretty funny done by him back then. I'll leave a link of that video in the description box and you can check it out for yourself. After a few years of going to contests, singing, practicing, he finally got selected to go to Korea in 2011 to become a Sheng, a trainee that's like really tough. If you know anything about South Korea's idol producing mechanisms and how the debuting thing works and how many years people train under what kind of circumstances, it's like a shi, right? Blood and tear history. One of the toughest places if you want to break into the entertainment business that you can go to. So that period of getting trained in South Korea really consolidated his skills of singing and dancing. He was selected as a lead dancer, team leader, and also rapper for his group that eventually didn't successfully happen for him. The exact detail about what went wrong uh, about this group and what caused him to eventually leave it and not really manage to do anything is very, very muddled. I tried my best to research what happened, but it seemed to be a pretty ambiguous thing. So I'm not sure about the details. I probably will never find out. What we do know is by the time 2014, he got offered Rose to act in dramas in China and he decided to quit his singing and dancing career. So in 2014, we see him in his first drama, that is the official start of his acting career. In a way, I think he is quite fortunate because a lot of people get professionally trained as actors and never actually got a role that is big enough or popular enough to push their names into the public's View. As soon as two years later, 2016, his role Li Chu in the drama The Glory of Tang Dynasty, Da Tang Rongyao, got him his first round of big fame. That was a quite successful period drama in which he acted as a prince of Tang Dynasty. I have seen that drama, although now, four years later, I have pretty much forgotten most about its plot. But I would agree he did a very successful portrayal of that role. He also sang the theme song Rongyao in that drama and I also love that song. That song was on my playlist for a long time. But during the same year, he actually had other works came out such as Qingyunzhi, also 
美人为限。<laughs> Do you still remember the、uh, memory loss that is starring Bai Yu and Yang Rong? When Bai Yu got really popular、uh, in 2018 due to Guardian, I went back to look at his older work, and I did watch Mei Ren Wei Xian. While I was watching it, I realized that yellow-haired guy was Ren Jia Lun. I had no impression of him ever playing that role. But now, when you look back, he's actually really fortunate because somehow his works, due to the mysteries of the universes working, tend to crash together and come out in a very condensed period of time, making his face familiar to people within a very short time frame. In 2017, he collaborated with the very successful actress Yang Zi in the fantasy white snake drama. In the same year, he also played Ye Cheng in Autumn Cicada and Lu Yi in Under the Power. For some weird reason, both 2017 dramas got put in the fridge. Frozen until the end, very end of last year, and then this year. So somehow, the mystery of the universe decided he really should have all his dramas come out together. Because in 2018, he filmed a drama, 不说再见 which still hasn't aired, but is scheduled to air later this year. Last year, 2019, he acted in the drama 美人木白手 which、um, I've talked about in my weekly videos. Should have aired, didn't, but will soon come out. As if that's not enough, he also acted in a drama called 蓝焰突击 last year, which is a drama about firefighters that is scheduled to come out this year too. Basically, 2020 will be Alan Ren's year if all those dramas also airs. It will be something like right at the beginning of the year, under the power. Then into May, we have Autumn Cicada, which although is a、um, mm, mm, drama, the drama went on satellite TV. I just want to quickly mention my mother actually watched Autumn Cicada on satellite TV, and she ranted about that drama to me yesterday.、I、was like, what the heck is this drama? I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. Apparently, international audiences agree too. Then, 不说再见 he led with Zhang Junning. It's supposed to come out later this year. Then there's this firefighter drama. There's this 美人木白手 in which he leads the drama with Zhang Huiwen. So if it all happened according to plan, he would have five freaking dramas that came out in 2020. I really want that to happen. It would be like a historical record for any actors to break. And if that pushes him to the top of the fame mountain in Chinese drama land, I will have no problem with that because I so highly appreciate this actor in so many ways. There are quite a few famous actors working today who came from athletic backgrounds, so that's not the most special thing about him. He is a very grounded. An honest person who do not get swayed by the craze of fame. During his first round of fame in China after Glory of Tang Dynasty, the next year, 2017, he very openly acknowledged his long-term girlfriend, who later turned his wife, on Weibo. That's usually not something that your agency would allow you to do or encourage you to do, and most of the stars will stay away from doing that, even if they do have a long-term relationship in life, just because it's kind of a fame killer. You are garnering 99% female fans who are mostly just projecting their ideal romantic partner onto you, and if you tell them. No, I have an actual real-life partner, and then we're gonna get married. You will lose a lot of fans. That's just the reality of things. And he had no problem of letting the world know that he's a real person. He has work, and he has his life, and he's not gonna sacrifice his right of having a normal life and play that idol imagery and making that his priority. Then next year, 2018, early February, he sends out a photo of his baby, his hand. So he's not just married; he also has a kid. 英年早婚 There's an idiom in China as 英年早逝 literally meaning die very young, and You know, it changed the last character, meaning dying into married, <laughs> married very young, and had a kid, and pretty much basically stop every female fans daydreaming <laughs> about、um, having him in their private life. And that's a really ballsy move in today's China's entertainment world, and especially when you are actually on the climb up, on the rise of your fame. So his fame and popularity did get affected a bit. 
but he didn't care about it. That is really not something that entertainment business people would usually resolve to. And I have a really high respect for his choice. Another thing about Ren Jialun that's really fascinating is he is so open and accepting of his past. When someone gets famous in the entertainment business, a group of people will go back and dig out your old histories, your old posts on internet, whatever stupid things you've done in the past and calling it hei liao, right? Dark material. It is kind of unavoidable. When you get famous, you will get that. He is super open to that. So people will like to dig out his old performances, not so good dancing, not so good singing. He used to have a blog that he constantly posts a lot of thoughts. It's like he doesn't have a zip on his lips. He would just say anything. He would type out all his very youthful and sometimes a little bit stupid words about his views about anybody, about the world, about his career, anything. And there are actually so much text he's written on his blog that his fans later collected all of them and printed them out, like literally did layout properly and printed out as a quite thick book called Guo Chao Wen Ji. The collected writings of Guo Chao. And he's totally fine with it. I'll read a couple of lines from it and you can judge if that is actually quite funny and cute. Tai Tao Kanja Tian Kong Shanti Raise my head and look at the sky. God is smiling down upon me. Some things for something, there would be nobody who understand me. For some things, there will be no one who forgives me. For some things, there will be people who will never accept me. This is Ren Guo Chao's world. That is before he changed his name. R G C is the initial. 你们读不懂的世界, the world you will not be able to understand. And there's a typo. That character is actually written as the wrong character here. <coughs> that is the Chinese teacher in me. 也就只有我一个人的世界, that is a world that only has one person, me, in it. <laughs> you know, like if I ever write something like that, which I never do. I would keep it in a diary that nobody can ever read. And he put it out on blog on the internet. So that shows you that like, he's just so cool and open in terms of like about what he thinks and he shares with people and he has no problems of looking back at all those things that happened and actually enjoy that and thinking it is a part of his own history and there's no need to deny that. That shows me that this person is a very mature person and who is very comfortable in his own skin. Not an easy thing to do, no matter what you do in life, it is very hard to be comfortable with yourself. The final thing obviously is as an athlete turned actor, he had no professional training, he never was trained in this area and he arrived at his current position in a career and in the profession due to his own hard work. And I do think the years of training as an athlete would help a lot. Not in acting per se, but in the way that he treats acting, in the ability to persevere and to stand challenges and basically physical ordeals. Because being an actor is also extremely physically demanding and requires a lot of patience, a lot of stamina. Practicing sports for years and years is not a small feat. That level of commitment rarely happens at that same intensity in other professions. I think those things helps this type of actors who came from that background to probably be much more able to breathe through quite difficult, grueling schedules and things that requires repetition practice, not giving up when you're still not good enough, all that type of quality. One final personal thing about this actor that I just want to share with my audiences is for some weird reason, every time I look at him on screen, I feel like I'm looking at a Buddha's statue. He gives me this impression of the Chinese idiom, Ci Mei Shan Mu literally meaning kind eyebrows and eyes. You would use this word to describe, for example, a middle-aged woman, an older man who are very soft and their edges are completely polished round due to years of experiences. They look at younger people with that very open, kind, generous, warm heart. 
you would describe those older people with that facial look. And obviously we often use that to describe Buddha statue looking like they're gently smiling, half eye opened and looking at the world with kindness. I'm not saying he's physically looking like a Buddha statue, he doesn't really. But somehow his eyes and eyebrows and the, the way he looks at people reminds me of a very kind older people or a statue of Buddha. And it's weird because I agree he's a really good looking guy, you know, like, but I totally don't get the attraction that's normally coming from the opposite sex to a straight woman when I look at him. I just often want to say in my heart, Ami Tuofu. <laughs> If some of you react in the same way as I do, uh, please do let me know so I know I am not alone in that department. I'm not the only person who would um, read this actor in this very unusual way. I can honestly say no other actor ever gives me that impression. Not Chinese actor, foreign country actors, nobody. Like he's the only one. <laughs> Every time I see, I, I literally feel like I'm going into a temple. So that will be the end of this video, my first video looking at a particular actor on my channel. Please do let me know if you like this type of video, if you have other suggestions about people that you would like me to uh, research into and then talk about. I would also mention that the style of this video stays with my usual style just because if I use a lot of clips from other you know, interviews, other dramas, just with a voiceover, it probably will be a shorter video, but I run the risk of copyright strikes that I just don't want to have and don't want to deal with on my channel. Thank you for your understanding and thank you for sitting through this video. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.